There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Got lots to tell you on this Friday Reads. Let's get started. I have bailed on two. Getting my mojo back. Those of you that might remember last week's Friday Read, it was just the wine talking. This was so freaking boring and poorly written. It had all the, the nuance of a family Christmas card letter. Uh... And then this happened, and then this happened, and then another baby was born. It's just stupid. And I had said that it had the most boring title for a novella ever, and that certainly... I'm, I'm saddest about the fact that it was so perfectly paired with this bookmark. And I tried to fill that space in my reading calendar with something on Scribd that didn't go very well either. And that was a Finnish novel, White Hunger, by Aki Olekainen, translated from the Finnish by Emily Jeremiah and Fleur Jeremiah. And I really liked the opening uh, chapter. The translation slash writing was quite lovely, describing a nature scene, if I remember correctly. And then it quickly became apparent how much the author liked writing hardcore sex scenes uh, with a misogynistic taint to all of them that had nothing to do with the story he was trying to tell. And after about the third one of those, I decided that I'd had enough. And one of my Finnish frequent commenters, subscribers, he had similar qualms with it, I found out, in the comment section on Goodreads. So I'm glad I got out of that one early. But, Jer, what I would like from you now, or anybody out there, is a recommendation of a finished novel that I should read. Thank you. And I have started two, one of which I've already finished. So the one that I've started and haven't finished is, at long last, Britta and I have begun. We are now... A third, maybe, of the way into The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay, a, an Indian novel that won a major Indian literary prize this year and has been not widely read on BookTube, but has been a BookTube darling. And I'm sorry to say that it started out brilliantly. And then the last, there was so many off, like bad, like so many uh, soul-destroying flaws in around chapters 8 through 10 that I'm not sure I'm going to finish it. Uh, yeah, I'm very disappointed by the way that it's gone south so quickly because I thought it might be within my top 20 reads of the year on the basis of the first five chapters. I love the character of the mother. I don't want to meet her in real life, but I love her didn't think that the male characters were very well drawn, something that Britta doesn't agree with me on, So it's, but she has other problems with the book that I don't, so it's been a very interesting buddy read. But no, I'm going to read the next five chapters tomorrow, and if it gets worse, I'm not going to finish it, because life's too short. I can see a lot of promise in this writer, but this, uh, by the... Uh, what seemed to me like fatal flaws that have happened with the characters and the plot. Things that were just unbelievable and just really bugged me that happened that made no sense. It feels like the novel's starting to fall apart, and I suppose that could be a temporary glitch. It doesn't usually happen. Once something like that happens, it usually spoils the rest of the novel for me. I will give it an honest try, but check Twitter tomorrow or Goodreads, see if I have bailed or not disappointed. This is maybe a bit of a Marmite book. I'm not sure. Occasionally I'll do these out of order or change the order in which I do them. And now I've realized that I'm doing that and I'm throwing off balance here, but we'll just keep going with the books that I have started. The one other book that I have started and finished is a nonfiction book. I decided a few days ago that I wanted to check on Scribd for sort of introductions to the French Revolution. I studied the French Rev Revolution as an undergrad history major. And that was only shortly after the French Revolution was concluded. <laughs> That's a long time ago. And, you know, it's one of the most important things 
in uh, modern history and it pops up in so many European novels or whatever and I am just thought, you know, I want a little bit of a refresher on this and I found the perfect book because I absolutely loved it. And that is French Revolutions, plural, for beginners by Michael J. LaMonica that was on Scribd and it was, again, Scribd is lying to me continually now because I chose it because it said it was 150 pages or something and it was more like 270, but I fell into it. It's so well written. Breezy writing style, very confident tone with the history. I don't know if it's all true or whether other scholars or more in-depth historical treatments of the French revolutions. So we're talking 1789, 1830, 1832, 1848. But really, it's it's the whole of French history from the, the first French revolution until the end of the louis-napoleon era fascinating i learned so much i learned a lot of fun facts the one that sticks with me the most right now was quite tertiary which was that louis-napoleon in about 18 in the 1870s i think decided to invade mexico and then he put an austrian prince maximilian on the throne as the empire emperor of mexico and that doofus maximilian actually did reign <laughs> in mexico it was in the 1860s i think early 1860s because it was yeah it was around the same time as this american civil war and it was just like what 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 and yeah the napoleons in america there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff there teddy roosevelt's secretary of state was a distant relative of Napoleon. Yeah, lots of stuff. But there was so much. I want to read more widely in the French Revolution now that I have whetted my appetite. I have never read anything from this For Beginners series, but they have quite a few on Scribd. Not many by this author, but I loved his writing style. The only other one that he has written is about the First Amendment. Isn't particularly interesting to me, but uh, he is a really good nonfiction writer. Just... Loved it. Five stars. Okay, so now usually this comes earlier in my Friday reads, but now let me tell you about the three books. Well, I've already told you about one. The two other books I've finished. One was a great disappointment, and one was a delightful surprise. I absolutely hated this book. This is one of the worst books that I've read in years. How disappointing. I mean, mitigated by the fact that J.L. Carr went on. This was his debut, 1960s, 1964. He went on to write my one of my very most favorite novels, A Month in the Country. But by the end, this got so misogynistic. Every female's bosoms were bursting out of her blouse, and they were all sluts and bitches. It was really sickening. I hated everything about it by the end. I'm, I wish I had bailed, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to read anything else by him unless I know going in that it's not a piece of shit like this was. I can't believe, like, I'm insulted, really, as a reader, that this has a 3.8 rating on Goodreads. What kind of people? I guess they're the kind of people that would vote for Boris Johnson. And in happier news, I finished an absolutely delightful collection of short fiction from Canada by a Congolese Canadian writer. I mentioned it maybe last week, and I finished it today, and it filled me with joy in a five-star way. It has the unforgettable title, Shut Up, You're Pretty, by Teya Mutanji. Wow, I'm going to do a full review. I didn't plan to, but I loved it that much. It's not a perfect book. It's a debut collection of short stories, but almost every story just made me gasp and smile, often on the same page or within the same paragraph. A writer to watch. I say it's a collection of short stories, but really I think I'm going to start talking about it and thinking about it as a novel. Each story has a little bit of a standalone quality, but really it's the experience of following this young Congolese immigrant living in Scarborough through uh, her teenage years where she just, you just want to say, no, don't do that. But now that you've done that, the way that you're telling me about what you did is just filling me with delight. So, wow, that's enough. Uh, I'll have a review up in the coming days. <sighs> And 
This is a new imprint that uh, some of some publisher in Canada, I think Arsenal Pulp Press, and it's been designed to foster and incubate, encourage writers of color in Canada and uh, other non-mainstream writers. I love that. We need more of that in the world, and we need to crowd out all the stupid asshole white guys that write this crap in the 1960s. Just push it all into the trash, can we? Oh. All right. So those two plus the French Revolution books are the three that I have started this week. And coming up, I have... Another buddy read starting maybe Sunday. And that is Leo Tolstoy's novella. I think it's his last work. His last book. Haji Murat. Translated. This is the translation by Richard Pavir and Larissa Volokonsky. And this will be a buddy read with Lukash. We have been planning this for a year or something. I know I've read some of the smaller Tolstoy books. Like in university a thousand years ago, and I don't remember any of them. I don't even remember which ones I've read. I know I haven't read any either of his tomes, but this will really, this feels like this will be my first Tolstoy, so. And we're gonna do this as a two-day buddy read, so I'll tell you all about it next week. And again, I might fold other stuff in this week, but nothing that's planned at the moment. And I have one other buddy read, in, and I have pretty much committed to doing one more shorter novel as a buddy read at the very end of December but so that and that will be my last buddy read of the year and I am indeed thinking that I'm going to cut back quite substantially on my buddy reads next year I love them and I am now have gotten to a place similar to where I have gotten to with readathons and whatnot that I just kind of want to go rogue go independent and uh, do maybe no more than two or three a month or a maximum of four. Maximum of four. Because I'm usually doing six or eight a month. And that's now feeling like too many. But I always end up enjoying almost all of them. And the ones that I don't enjoy, I'll, you'll have to buy me a drink first before I'll tell you which ones those were. Anyway, um, I was going to say something about the UK election, but I have no words and it's not what this channel's about, but I'm thinking about those people who c live there and are feeling uh, vulnerable and uh, uh, shocked and uh, depressed, sending out lots of bookish love and fingers crossed that uh, things won't be as bad as they seem like they're gonna get. So on that, Somber note, uh, that's all I have for you today. What do you have for me? That's what I want to know. Thanks for watching.